Welcome to BizHack Live. This is a webinar series we have every Wednesday at 12.30. Uh, I'm Dan Gratch, the host and the founder of BizHack, Digital Marketing Training Academy. Today, I'm really excited that we have Jennifer Hudson, who's going to be presenting to us on where to pivot and start with core values. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Jennifer. Next week, we're going to be talking to several different businesses about how they have adapted and pivoted as a result of COVID uh, with an emphasis on real estate and the related group and Allison Goldberg, who heads up marketing there, will be leading that. And then the week after that, we're going to be talking about Google My Business. Google My Business is a local listings service, kind of like a Yelp that Google offers to any small business, any business for that matter. And it's become increasingly important and effective for your digital marketing, and we'll be talking about that. Um, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack, and the host today. I've worked in journalism uh, for the first part of my career in marketing more recently. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, a business owner, and an educator as well. Um, we have uh, at BizHack been uh, acknowledged with a number of accolades, including we were named a top startup in uh, 2019 by the Miami Herald. We've been selected for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Accelerator Program, and we were recently selected for the SWAT 305 Accelerator Program funded by the Knight Foundation. I'm a Princeton and FIU grad, go Panthers. Uh, and go Tigers as well, of course. Uh, on Monday, we have a course that's getting started that Milu is going to be a part of. Uh, it's a five-week accelerated course in digital marketing um, and online lead generation. And um, I wanted to kick off today's conversation with this headline ripped straight out of the New York Times on June 18th. Um, on June 18th, uh, they published a story that for those of us who've been following the news uh, came as no surprise, which is that uh, the coronavirus is disproportionately impacting uh, black businesses and black business owners. And uh, the reason I wanted to pause on this is because this, uh, the topic today is how to adapt your marketing during COVID-19 and the social unrest we're experiencing from a basis of your core values. So BizHack's core value is to help small businesses, limited budget enterprises, folks who don't have huge staffs or millions of dollars, and help them get started with online marketing to generate leads and sales for their business. And our mission is to help these micro enterprises to do this economically and time efficiently because they're short on time and money. Um, when the coronavirus hit, we immediately began to offer this webinar series. Um, and the reason why is because our mission and vision and values were aligned with supporting and helping small businesses through this difficult time. And then as the coronavirus continued, what we began to see is that more black and brown folk were dying and more black businesses owned by black and brown folk were dying as well. Uh, as you can see from this headline. And so as a result, uh, when we looked back at our core values, right, which was to serve small businesses and small business owners, what we realized is we had to do more to help businesses started by underrepresented minorities, by entrepreneurs of color, by female owned entrepreneurs, because those were the businesses that were getting impacted the most. And so if we're serving small businesses, we have to go the extra mile to help serve and, and, and work on behalf of businesses by entrepreneurs of color. And that's what led us to launch uh, a scholarship program for min minority and women owned businesses as well as professionals of color. So the reason I bring up this example is we didn't just decide to do this because. We decided to run the scholarship program because we know that these in order for us to fulfill our mission of serving small businesses, we had to do more for this population because they were getting impacted disproportionately by the economic circumstances by COVID-19. 
So we're going to talk today about core values and how you can then come up with pivots and programs and marketing as, as a result from it. But I just wanted to share that little reflection there so that Jennifer, you know, potentially can refer back to it as she's doing her presentation. We're very lucky today to have Jennifer Hudson. She's going to be talking about why core values are vital to the success of your business. Uh, we're going to go through an exercise about how to identify and define them. And we're going to also talk about why pivoting back to core values offers a great opportunity to see your business in new ways. Um, I want to welcome you guys all to use the chat. Um, the chat uh, is, um, uh, I just sent a note to all of you and I'd invite you to respond uh, to a question that Jennifer asked us to start with, which was, have you developed core values for your company? If Milu and Eddie and Julia and everybody else, if you could just respond back to that chat and let us know if yes, you have or no, you haven't. Uh, Maxine, Myra, Michelle, Ruthann, let us know, have you developed core values for your company? Um, and uh, that will help give us a sense of where we're at and kind of calibrate the presentation as uh, in response. Uh, a quick word about Jennifer. Jennifer is amazing. She's been working in the communications and marketing fields for, for more than two and a half decades. She's the founder of Think Beyond Public Relations. It's a strategic communication. It makes me sound so old when you say that, two and a half decades. <laughs> Go ahead. Just a short 25 years. Uh, she works with entrepreneurs and nonprofits to match their communications to their business objectives. This is really common mistake is you'll see like a lot of these small enterprises will like have an intern do their social media uh, or maybe one person will do Twitter and another person will do Facebook. And it's like schizophrenic and it sounds completely uh, off brand. Um, and a lot of people I think have under invested in the importance of social media and you know in many ways BizHack is dedicated to the belief that if you leverage social media effectively you can make a heck more money. Um, Jennifer has a pretty distinguished corporate experience that uh, came before uh, her starting uh, uh, Think Beyond Public Relations. She worked at American Airlines, Sabre, and British Airways. She's the president of the Greater Fort Lauderdale chapter of PRSA and a coach at Radical Partners mentor at the Venture Mentoring Team, as well as at 1909, which is a co-working space in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach. Uh, and with that, I wanna hand it over to Jennifer and we're gonna be kind of doing some really fun interactive exercises and also have a conversation. So thank you, Jennifer. Awesome, thank you so much, Dan, for having me. Welcome everybody. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, so, uh, and get started. So I, I want to first um, talk about core values and, and, and get us level set. I noticed in the comments that some folks said they had not developed them. Some people said, I live them, but I haven't formally communicated them. We're gonna talk about core values. They are a reflection of your business. They're a reflection of everything you are, everything you do, they uh, impact the way you operate, the way you partner, the way you hire, all of that. So I wanna first just level set and get into some definitions about what it means, um, when, what I mean when I say core values. Like what does that mean and um, how should you consider them? So I really think that core values are the essence of who you are as a company. They are the soul of the machine. They not only define who you are, they also define who you are not. And that's, that becomes very important as a business owner, as a nonprofit leader, when you begin to think about even vendors that you work with or partners that you work with. Um, defining who you are not is just as important as, as, as defining who you are. Your core values communicate who you strive to be. Um, we don't always live up to them. We know that. We're human. Companies are full of humans but they indicate what you should strive to be as an organization. They communicate that to your various stakeholders as well, your customers, partners, staff, and they should differentiate your brand. Um, they, should, uh, they should communicate what is unique about you as an organization. They also, as I said, they inform how you interact with your various stakeholders. And we're gonna talk a bit about what that means um, as well today. 
um, they should be authentic and believable, which means that you should be walking the talk. If you have core values are much more than pieces of paper, uh, nice little words that you include on your website. They're much more than beautiful phrases that you that you um, you know pos uh, post it next to your next to your next to your computer. Um, for core values to ring true and be authentic and believable and be yours alone, you have to be willing to apply systems and practices and policies and importantly, budget to those core values. So to, it, to illustrate this, I wanna show, I wanna just show you to illustrate the uniqueness of core values and um, how they can be recognizable for companies. I want you to read through these and tell me if you can guess who this organization is, who this company is. Maybe you can tell me in the chat, Dan, what you're seeing. Anybody know who this is? Well, we'll give you folks a few seconds to read it. No, no one's responded yet. We believe in the simple, not the complex. We believe in saying no to thousands of projects so that we can really focus on the few that are truly important and meaningful to us. Oh, Myron, Michelle, they got it. It's Apple. Yeah. And so just reading those, um, you had an indication of who that was. This one might be a little more difficult, but I want you to read through and tell me if you, um, optimism, collaboration, rigor. I, I just love that core value. And when you know who this organization is, it'll become clear to you. Um, any guesses on this one? This one tends to be a little bit harder for people. <laughs> It's the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So when you, when you think about the work they, they're doing to eradicate disease, someone said BizHack, GE. When you think about the work that uh, they do to eradicate disease around the world, um, this core value of rigor um, really speaks to that. And so your core values um, really are an expression of the essence of who you are as a company. I wanted to just give you a brief example of what pivoting back to core values looked like for uh, one of my clients, YWCA South Florida, who just launched, by the way, if you haven't, if you're not connected to me at all, a 21 day racial equity and social justice challenge. Um, they, YWCA South Florida had their stated core values, courage, compassion, commitment. Um, but we wanted to uncover whether or not employees were connected to those core values. So we explored um, in, a, in, a, in a workshop setting, the definitions of core values as I've done with you today. Uh, and then we took each one of those core values and asked their key leadership staff in their organization to identify where those core values showed up in their individual work. Where are you courageous in your work? What does that look like for you? How do you demonstrate compassion in your day-to-day -day work? And this was even the CFO and HR, so that everyone could think about how these core values show up in their day-to-day -day work, how they show up in their day-to-day -day lives in the office, how they show up in the way they interact with one another. And then we took that and extrapolated that to YWCA South Florida and asked the question, how are we being courageous in our work with the people that we're trying to serve? How are we being compassionate with, our, with, our, um, with the people that we serve? Where does, where, where does our commitment show up? And um, with this 21 day racial equity and social justice challenge, one of the things, you know, all of us have done a lot of introspection and um, this challenge is an opportunity for people to do that as well. But we've all had moments of introspection where we've been thinking about, is there something more I could be doing? Um, and YWCA actually realized that it, that, it, that it needed, that it had an opportunity to focus its programs and services more heavily on eliminating racism and empowering women and being courageous and bold in doing that. And the, the challenge is their opportunity to do that. And so they pivoted back to those core values of courage um, it takes courage to start these kinds of conversations in the community. Um, I'll, maybe I'll put a link to it so you can, you'll know what I'm talking about. It takes courage to begin to have these conversations in the community. 
um, and it takes commitment to, their, to that mission. So that's an example that I wanted to show you of pivoting back to core values. Now, if you've got a, um, you can just jot this on a piece of paper. I'm gonna take you through a, a brief exercise. I'm gonna take you through it briefly, but it's an exercise that I use in workshops to get folks who do not have their core values defined uh, to help them create those. So what I want you to do right now is to list out the top four values, um, those top four values that speak to who you are as, as a company, as, as an individual. If you're an individual business owner, your core values are going to be a reflection of, of your personal beliefs, um, I believe. So um, list out your core values. You can talk about it in the chat or ask a question. Um, I've quit my job, so I'm sorry, I'm looking at, oh, okay. I was looking at the, at the chat. So list out your top four values. Take a moment to do that right now. Um, I'll, I, I don't wanna, I don't like to bait the conversation, but I'll give you some examples. Um, one of my core values <laughs> is actually laughter. And that, uh, that, that actually um, speaks to my desire to work with people that I can have fun with. Uh, I work very, very hard and very, very intensely with my clients and people that I'm serving. And it's important to me to enjoy my work. And so laughter is a core value. I want people to have fun working with me. I wanna have fun with the people I work with. Um, so think about what's important for you. Myra says innovation, passion, integrity, and education. Give us just a thumbs up in the chat when you've got your, your four, or even if you have your top three. Balance, Michelle says balance. Biz hacks, community empowerment results. That's great. Balance, empowerment and growth. Another one of mine is, is strategy always, because my work is, is uh, I'm very passionate about making sure that you match your communications activities to business objectives and that you're constantly thinking through what that means. Honesty. Ruthann, what do you mean by horses? A horses needs come first. Provide the value, walk our talk, always be learning, give back. Love that, Julia. So after you define those core values, let me back up for a second here. Define what they mean to you. And this is an important part of the exercise and you may not have a chance to do all of this right now. So, you know, for example, if you say honesty, what does honesty mean for you? How do you, into, how do you live out honesty in your life? How do you want your company to live out honesty? How do you want to, interact with your with business partners with vendors with your clients how does honesty show up what does that mean for you well lilia said humbleness humility tiffany so glad to see you respect creativity meaningful work well-being yeah, so you think about, right, what, what does well-being mean for you? How do you define that? Community is a creative and supportive space for professionals and entrepreneurs to dare to fail gloriously. Love that. My business is about raising the bar of horsemanship. I teach people to hear and meet horses' need. Ah, so horses first. Got it, Ruth Ann. It's all about making it easier to take better care of horses. That's great. And then after you define what those values mean to you, it's important to prioritize them. Now I should say, most of the, the responses that I'm seeing here are like three, four values. When you have ample time to really brainstorm and, and think through this, we will often have you know, companies with seven or eight core values. And as a communicator, I always say that we can only remember three to five messages at a time. So it's important to prioritize and it's important to prioritize based on where your business is 
today and where you envision it being in the next one to two to three years. So prioritize your core values. And this is where pivoting back to values, if you've got your core values, this is where pivoting back to them in light of COVID, pivoting back to them in light of the Black Lives Matter movement, pivoting back to them in light of what's happening in the world today becomes very important. So if honesty is a core value, and I'll just use Black, the Black Lives Matter movement as an example, if honesty is a core value for you, how, um, how important is it for you right now? And we're gonna talk in a bit about uh, how, you, how you attach behaviors to that core value. Um, if honesty is a value for you right now, is there an opportunity for you, for you to look at, um, honestly, at how you might be interacting with businesses or partners or potential uh, Black-owned businesses um, with, um, with businesses of color? The way, and, and this is where your example, Dan, of how you pivoted and, and looked at your core values through a broader lens um, is very important and very relevant. So prioritizing is what's most important right now. So Julia, based on your values that you outlined, what would you say is the number one value right now that you would want to communicate about, about who you are as a company? Or anyone else can chime in as well. Michelle, your values that you listed, um, what would be your number one priority, priority value? So mine right now, actually, um, since COVID started, is giving back. I've uh, mm -hmm. did free workshops to over 36 women. Um, and we are actually financially coming up with a plan to give back to um, Black Lives Matter and a couple of other organizations as well to support our communities. Okay, and I, that sounds like that's in direct response to the social changes that are happening right now in our, in, right. our, in our nation. That's great. Anyone else wanna share? So prioritizing, you know, as I mentioned, I mentioned the exercise that I went through with YWCA, and if you do have core values, I really believe passionately that it's important at least once a year, um, Obviously, we're forced, we're forced to do this now, or we should be doing this now based on COVID and based on social change that's happening in our country. But I believe that you should be going through this exercise at least once a year, pulling them out and making sure that you are living and breathing them, that you look at your current business environment through the lens of your core values. Where can you get better at living them out? How do you attach behaviors to them? which brings me to the next, the next um, session. I'm having like trouble with this, <laughs> doing my, my scrolling here. Okay, so the next, the next step then is to describe the behaviors that you would want associated with each of those values. Um, the expectations that you would have of both yourself and other people who work with you, who work for you, um, with whom you interact, the people that you serve, your clients. Um, the behaviors that you want associated with those values. So if honesty is a value, maybe that looks like um, transparency in your accounting. Maybe that looks like um, being direct and open always with your, uh, with your, with your staff, with yourself, right? Um, having accountability partners. So the behaviors that you attach to your values are critical because as your business grows and you begin to hire people and you begin to partner with other business owners possibly, um, you wanna make sure that they are reflecting the values as you believe them to be, right? You define them. So someone else's value of honesty could be completely different. This influences the way that you that you write your job descriptions. It influences the way that you conduct your job interviews. It influences the way that you, that, as I said, that you choose business partners. So describing the behaviors that you want associated with each of those values is very important. I'm going to put in the, in the chat right now um, a resource. And maybe if you could look up the link to it, um, Lilia. 
um, and attach it for further discussion and for further um, for further research and diving deep into this topic. There's a book, Culture Hacker by Shane Green, um, that really, I, I love the way he discusses the fact that that core values and living those out belong especially to, to business leaders, to senior leaders in an organization, but really to everyone. Um, that same work that I did with YWCA South Florida um, sort of migrated into developing brand ambassadors with the organization. And we did brand ambassador training. Thank you. There's the link there. Brand ambassador training for folks who would be um, uh, proponents and cheerleaders for the core values within the organization. Um, they also, uh, we also, so one of the things that he did as well was they created opportunities for employees, for example, to catch one another living out those core values. They created rec recognition program around those core values. Um, incorporate, they're incorporating those core values into their executive communications. So those are uh, examples of ways that you can really make them meaningful. Now, I should say that when I talk about attaching budget to core values, this becomes very important. Let's say it's very important, like professional development is very important for you. Um, if you're not willing to attach budget to that, to continuing education opportunities um, for you and any staff you might have, then the, the, the value rings hollow, right? It's not authentic. It's not believable. So just as Julia has as one of her core values, you have to be willing to walk the talk. Um, so Milu says, Positive is, positivism is one of my core values. I'm committed to write and share positive messages and thoughts. I love that. And so the way, the behavior that you're attaching to that, Milu, is um, I, where are you, where do those positive messages show up? Is that in your communications? Is that just in your interactions with others? I, I'm committed to, to make a post daily in my Instagram account. And obviously I have to be um, uh, reasonable with what I write and what I do every day in, mm -hmm. my, in my life, not only uh, as a speech. Is this your personal Instagram or your business Instagram account? I'm starting. Uh, it's an entrepreneurship. So it's ah. not my personal. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyone else want to share one value that you have listed out and define what it means to you? Um, one that you've prioritized as one of your top ones, and then the behavior that you would associate, that you would want associated with that value. You can put it in the chat, you can share verbally. Hey, this is Michelle Carroll with One Stop Marketing. Hi. Hi, Michelle. Um, sorry, Jen, I didn't respond to your last question. I was multitasking ahead of my call. That's okay. Um, so one value, one of my, our core values um, since we founded our business in 2007 has always been balance. And um, as a working mom, I, um, one thing that I try to do is make sure that the clients I do take on because our time is limited do, um, you know, really uh, reinforce uh, the services we're providing and also understand balance. Um, and sometimes, you know, over the years, we've found clients that don't really respect that and um, it doesn't seem to be a good match. So I try to, you know, align myself with those clients that um, value our services and see the results, but at the same time, understand that core value. Mm -hmm. Have you had instances where you had uh, to... Um several relationships with clients who didn't yes um, yeah. i have and it was stressful because that one time oh you know there have been a couple instances but one of those clients particularly was about 40 percent of my revenue at that time and oh, wow. uh it was a hard decision but at the oh, same wow. time when you um you know you find yourself just stressed out in a different way and it's just uh you know i mean you know getting insomnia or just feeling all these negative energy vibes, then um, I have to remind myself of that and step away. And at least in my experience, it actually opened the door for 
you know, a better customer experience with the new clients that I was able to dedicate my time to. Right. Wow. You were really bold then, Michelle. That's wonderful. That's exactly, um, that's exactly the, the importance of, of, of having core values, defining what they mean to you and attaching behaviors to them. Because when you get into these tough uh, situations as a business owner, you've got to be able to pivot back to them. When you get into situations where because of whatever is happening in the community, in the world today, you need to rethink your business, you have to be able to go back to those core values. What is it that, that, we, that we said initially that we believe? They're, they're just a great barometer to always measure yourself against. Um, BizHack Academy has integrity, telling an applicant if the course is not a good fit for them. And that's very important, right? That's, that's, a, that's a, a budget decision, right? Because you, yeah. you could easily say, you will take that student because that's revenue. Um, integrity, not partnering with service providers um, if it compromises the integrity of the courses. Uh, communicating in alignment with core values. They define each one of us at the end of the day, right, Milu says. Yeah, they do, and, you, and your business. They definitely do. And you want them to be reflective of your business because they, um, they determine the type of clients that you attract, the type of customers that you attract. They determine the kinds of employees that you hire. And they, um, they determine the way you run your business from day to day. So yes, they, they, um, they definitely define and should define you um, at, at, uh, each and every day. So that's the brief presentation that I wanted to do that gives you an example of how you can um, begin to think through this. And you'll get a copy of this presentation so you can put more thought in, into, into your core values and really uh, define them and attach it, uh, behaviors to them. The behaviors are so important. And if I can stress nothing else, it is that you must be willing to attach systems and practices, policies, and especially budget to your core values. So if great customer service, if you're a company and you've got great customer service as a, as a core value, right? We do everything for our customers, but you don't invest in customer service training for your staff. Um, then that value rings, rings hollow. It's, it's not authentic. It's going to show up in the way that your customers respond to you and maybe in social and in reviews. So um, living out the core value and attaching budget to ensure that the behaviors that you attach to it can be fully expressed is very important. So um, that, any questions from anyone? Dan, you and I can just have a conversation about this. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is, guys, if you could um, put any questions that you have into the chat. Uh, I have a couple prepared, um, and then we're going to um, uh, take some of your questions as well. And what's nice is uh, we wanted to structure this topic in particular as a conversation um, because we know that this lends itself to that. Um, Jennifer, I know that we also wanted to talk about how core values um, – relate to mission and vision and also how core values specifically relate to pivoting. So I'm going to actually start with that second one, um, but I'll leave you some time at the end if you wanted to talk about mission and vision. Yeah, that's right, because this is, we, we're only covering one aspect of this, of, these, of this process, right? The core values are the starting point, and you use those as your starting point to then, de to, to then develop your vision and mission. Um, and so that'll be yeah, we'll definitely get to that, um, uh, everybody. But uh, Julie, I see your question, and we'll talk about that shortly. Yeah. So the topic of the talk is looking to pivot, start with your values. Um, do you have any examples of companies that you're working with or companies you're observing who have pivoted in ways that either honor or violate their core values? Oh, I don't know if I want to talk about the ones that are violating. <laughs> you know, the case study that I, that I revealed about YWCA is a, is a great example of, you know, one of their core values of courage. Um, they recognize that they weren't doing enough. I mean, eliminating racism is a part of their, uh, is a part of their mission. And they recognize that they weren't doing enough. This opportunity to do the challenge is, um, just the beginning of, of, a, of, a, 
of a rethink about programs and services that they can continue to offer in, um, in their efforts to end systemic racism. And I think it's wonderful what they've done um, within, I don't know, the, a day that it was announced. We've got more than 2,000 people registered, more than 80 companies have signed up. And it's important because the challenge is geared toward action. And eliminating racism will take, you know, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it sounds lofty and bold. Um, and you have to be courageous in the way that you're, that you're uh, living that out. And this is the beginning of a conversation. So that's one example. So, you know, I, I have an example, I think, of one that violated its core values and is getting punished for it, which is CrossFit. Have you been tracking what's going on with CrossFit and the founder and, and some of the things that have been No, coming? no, tell me, tell me about it. I heard a little bit about it, I think. So, you know, I, I, we had a, a student in the last cohort who is a CrossFit um, licensee. He uses the CrossFit name. Um, and he... Uh, oh, yes, I do know about CrossFit. I'm sorry, go ahead. He himself with CrossFit because of just really insensitive um, comments from the founder that indicated a complete lack of understanding of racial inequity and the Black Lives Matter movement. And I think within one or two days of his statements, um, and he also like really took a um, licensee to task during an, a conference call, an internal conference call that got leaked. Um, I think like 2000 licensees disassociated themselves with the CrossFit brand. Um, and I just think it shows that we live in a moment where, you know, CrossFit is intended, you know, as best I can tell, to be a very inclusive place where someone who is willing to work hard uh, can change their body um, and do it, you know, in a stripped down environment with a lot of other intense folks. Mm -hmm. And so, gosh, like if you're in Miami and you run a CrossFit studio, you're, the majority of your customers inevitably are people of color. And so if the founder and the creator of the CrossFit brand is racist, you know, or says something that's not inclusive, uh, it's very, very hard for you to reconcile that as a licensee and um, frankly not get punished for it by your clients. Right, right. So anyway, that was an example, I think, a very clear example of where a, a violation of maybe an unstated core value by the founder and CEO led to a revolt by his licensees. Do you know what their core values are? Has anybody looked that up real quickly? I, could, I wonder yeah. what the, yeah. And what that reminds me of is that, you know, there is an opportunity at this moment. You know, when I talk about pivoting back, there's an opportunity at this moment to look at why you started your company, um, what, what you stand for, and think of it in that broader sense. And it sounds like, I mean, if this guy is racist, maybe he wasn't willing to do that. Um, he didn't do that, obviously. But um, that would have been a perfect opportunity to say, we believe whatever CrossFit believes, I, I did CrossFit for a while, but we believe that you know, this type of workout should be accessible to everyone. And when we thought through that, where did we intentionally think about this broader audience that includes um, uh, black, brown, people of color, right? Did we, did we think about that? And, and whether or not you intentionally thought about it, I will tell you as a black woman, like I think about that stuff. I think about it when I'm viewing um, ads. I think about it when I'm watching television shows. Like it's, it's all that representation really matters. And so it's such a great opportunity that they, that they missed to go back and think, to, to go back and attach the, the reason why they started their company, what their values are um, through a broader lens. And I think that's what's really important to do right now as you pivot. How can I, as you did, Dan, how can I reimagine my business in some way to make sure that when I say I want to serve small business owners and, and provide information to them to help them grow their business, to help them make more money. Um, how can I do that through this broader lens and ensure that I'm, that I'm being represented, that I'm being inclusive and representing um, and, and helping to represent people from all backgrounds? And, you know, we've been doing a little bit of research in the background here. Um, 
you know, I did CrossFit core values and I found the core values of two licensees. Mm -hmm. uh, the first core value of Bartlett's CrossFit is lead with love. Uh, oh, wow. CrossFit South Brooklyn, they talked about inclusive as their second core value. So, oh, wow. you know, you can see right there that the licensees, and then Julia made the point that you don't see core values or a mission on the CrossFit website. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. what you're seeing there, I think, is a uh, whether or not you uh, have core values written out, uh, your uh, staff, your partners, your licensees, your franchisees, and your s students will kind of fill in the blanks for you. And, right. and in a moment of crisis, you don't have something to fall back on or something that you're all aligned on. You're out of alignment suddenly with your licensees and then they let you go because they just don't feel. And that, that could be a staff member, that could be a, a partner, uh, as well as a, a licensee. I think it's a, a fabulous case study. Of it is. And wouldn't it have been amazing if CrossFit were the kind of company that, that took if they had those core values and use it uh, to onboard their their licensees to get everyone on the same page, right? This is who we stand for. This is who we are. Um, obviously, I guess we understand why maybe that didn't happen. I don't know. But, um, but interesting that the licensees themselves um, did fill in those blanks, right? And now find themselves out of alignment with the, with the core brand. You know, another great example, uh, is Papa John's. Um, they had a real problem with their CEO right. uh, being <laughs> a racist as well. And um, I think he ended up having to step down. Um, but, the but the company had these core values, focus, accountability, superiority, Papa, people are priority always, attitude and constant improvement. Um, and so I do think that um, yeah, I haven't studied that one as closely, but that might be an example of a company where its own founder violated their stated core values uh, and had to be held accountable, which is right. One of the core values. Yeah, uh, exactly. He was held accountable and, and left the company. That's a great example. Yeah. So I want to answer Julia's question. She asked, how, you, how do you communicate your core values? Um, there are so many different creative ways that you can do this. As, a, as a, um, a solo business owner, obviously, the obvious things are to um, include them on your website, um, to include them in your communications if you do blog posts or, you know. But I love the idea of telling stories with your core values using your core values to tell customer stories, using your core values to, um, to communicate uh, what you stand for through, through, um, through your social media channels, through your blog posts. Storytelling is a great way to do that. If you have staff, um, I don't know, I've, Michelle and I, uh, Michelle Carroll and I were on the board of the, well, she still is, I think, of the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association. And we went through a process where we um, uh, talked through our core values and identified them and decided to recognize one another as board members when we were a volunteer organization, to recognize one another when uh, we ca caught someone living out that core value. And the president at the time had an award created, I think it was like an ampersand, um, and that uh, at each board meeting, whoever, you know, had it would recognize someone else and we would pass that. And simple things like that with your staff make a huge difference. As I mentioned, YWCA used it um, for a recognition program uh, for its staff. But communicating through storytelling, I think, is really important. And, and you can do that through blog posts. You can do that through um, even through the social media images that you have. Um, telling the stories of your business through the lens of your core values. Does that help, Julia? Okay. But I love the fact that you can get really creative. Like if you search core values, for example, you'll see companies that do things like um, uh, post them up in the lunchroom or they'll print out, um, uh, print out little things to attach to people's computers in the office. Um, they have their recognition programs built around them. 
Um, they offer um, continuous training, professional development training to their staff as an example of, of living out that core value. Um, communicating them through company communications. I think it's always important to, uh, to keep employees informed about uh, strategic priorities in the business and relating those to their everyday work. And that's a great opportunity to communicate core values as well, spotlighting a core value um, once a week or once a month. And um, I'm, I'm you know, pulling all this off the top of my head now, but those are all creative ways that you can use to communicate your core values. Yeah, I love them. I love the idea of telling a story for each one of them. And I mm -hmm. have each of them. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with your give back, you know, I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Communicating the fact that that's one of your core values and how you live that out, not necessarily in such a literal way, but it, you know, by telling a story so that people know who you stand for. Like you, you shouldn't even necessarily have to um, list the words as much. Um, and it's important to list the words, but it, uh, it, by telling the story and letting people see how you're acting and how you're operating in your business, um, you communicate your core values. You know, I wanted to bring up another example that has been on my mind a lot lately, which is Nike. So I don't know if you guys remember, but Nike put out an ad with Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. uh, back at a time when it was really feeling dangerous to do so. Um, Colin Kaepernick, for those of you who don't know, is this uh, black football player, a quarterback, uh, supernaturally talented, who took a knee uh, during the national anthem uh, and essentially was blackballed by all NFL teams and couldn't get a job. Um, and, uh, you know, the NFL has been really late and terrible on the issues of uh, Black Lives Matter uh, because they have a lot of racist fans. And uh, Colin Kaepernick, uh, basically was out of a job. And um, Nike put out a really powerful ad of his that went viral. And I know at the time felt like risky for a company to take a stand like that. Um, you know, since then the world has changed and Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL has said that he messed up uh, and that they should never have treated Colin that way and Colin should get his job back. But it's really too little too late in my opinion, uh, the NFL uh, like NASCAR, to me, are really tainted institutions that have a terrible racist past and lots of racist fans that they cater to. Uh, and I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. So I'm curious, you know, with Nike, I'm looking at their core values, which is um, performance, authenticity, innovation, and sustainability. And I wonder if when they were thinking, God, do we do an ad with Colin Kaepernick? you know, that's really a, 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 a social justice ad, if you look at it, where does that fit into our core values? Um, and maybe it's in authenticity, right? Like performance, authenticity was the other one. It's, it's written down here, innovation and sustainability. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting, you know, I, I wonder when they were making that decision in the boardroom, and I guarantee you is a CEO level decision that made that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and, and they got a lot of uh, flack for it and they got a tremendous amount of support from what right. I think their core constituency. Um, and it did not feel to me inauthentic, although you could argue that it was really savvy marketing as well. Well, it's um, both, right? And that's, that's the holy grail when it's, <laughs> when it's authentic and it's, <laughs> and, it's, um, and it's savvy marketing and yields results for you. I think authenticity definitely had to play a part in that, but I'd be curious to know how they would define sustainability. Um, maybe if they define that in, tom, in terms of um, longevity, and I'm sure that these core values are all connected to one another. So if they're consistently innovating, they're gonna um, sustain their organization, unless sustainability refers to um, uh, global impact, right? And it, it probably it could refer to that as well. Um, but if I, I'd be curious to know how they define those because that would have impacted their decision to run with the Colin Kaepernick ad. I should say, by the way, that Colin Kaepernick also received some flack for doing that ad. Um, and so I'm sure that um, he held true to his core values as well because he probably understood that he was raising um, the specter of, his, of, of the cause um, by doing that ad. Um, I'm actually really proud of Nike for, for, for um, supporting him in that way and for running that ad. I thought it was, it was great. 
Um, I just put in the chat, uh, and we'll include in the follow-up, uh, an article in the New Yorker that kind of try to address that question uh, behind Nike's decision. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll leave that for you guys to read later. You know, That's we're about awesome. 10 minutes from the end. Um, I wanted to make sure that we talk about mission and, and vision, vision. And how they relate to core values. Right, okay. Let me, um, let me just share my screen again, maybe. Is that good? So as I said, so core values are the starting point. Um, and if you if you developed your core values but haven't developed vision and mission, and you'll get this, so you'll be able to go, go continue through this process. I wanted to just touch on these very quickly and define them as well. So vision is very important. Think of the core values as sort of your north star. Um, as I said, that soul of the machine, the essence of who you are. Your vision then is based on those and gives voice to your unique view of the world. If the world, the ideal world for our business, for what we do, looks like this. It's your pie in the sky. It's, um, it's, it's again, what, how you envision the world would be, if, if, how the perfect world would be for, for you and for your business. Your vision should be easily understood. It should be captivating. It should be simple and concise. I see some vision statements that are so long-winded and, you know, I think, you know, I love this quote by Thomas Jefferson, like the best of all talents is that of only using one word when two will do. As a, as a uh, former journalist, you will appreciate that, Dan, you, you never stop being a journalist. But <laughs> um, they should be, it should be believable and ownable. It should motivate, exude, and inspire passion. And it should speak to the needs of your customers and the community. And there's a brief exercise, um, not a brief exercise, there's an exercise that is, that is included for you, to, for you to begin to fashion your vision statement. What do I dream about for my company? Um, what's the ideal future for my customers using my products and services? What does that ideal future look like? And again, as I said, what does a perfect world look like for my business? What do I dream about for my company? So thinking through and answering these questions vis-a-vis -vis core values gets you closer to identifying that vision. And many times people will confuse vision and mission statements. Your vision statement, as I said, your vision is that pie in the sky, where, what the perfect world would look, for, look like for my, for my business. Mission, on the, other, on the other hand, stems from both core values and vision. It describes three, it has three aspects to it. What you do, for whom, and to what end, so it's goal oriented. It should also be motivational, inspirational, and that's very important for, especially for nonprofit organizations like YWCA that I mentioned, eliminating racism and empowering women. Short, sweet, that's their mission. It should be believable. Um, it should be clear, concise. It, your mission should speak to how you're gonna serve your customers, your employees, importantly, and community. Um, one thing I want to stress as well is that as businesses grow, I'm a huge proponent of internal communications and of employee engagement. And getting your core values right now as your business grows will, will just help you in so many ways to ensure that you're hiring the right staff, that you're onboarding them properly, and that they are engaged uh, from day one in the way that you onboard them with your core values, vision, and mission. Um, and when I, when I talk about community, one of the things that we could add here as well is, um, is partners. So it speaks to how you're going to serve. And it's your barometer for success. So your mission, you know, you can look at your mission. Uh, you should be able to look at your mission and say, am I really doing what I said I would do? Am I really doing what I promised to do? Um, and so there's an exercise as well where you can uh, begin to formulate that mission statement, thinking about who I serve, who you serve, what I do for them, and the impact of your work or your product or services. So um, I'll leave it there. You'll, you'll get that information. Um, but I, that's, um, that's, that's that. So thank you very much, Dan. I don't know if you have anything you want to add about what I just covered. Um, I'll stop sharing yeah, well, now. You know, um, Let's um, take a minute or two. If, does anybody have any questions related to 
core values as it relates to mission and vision. It sounds to me like you start with core values and then right. you write your vision and then you write your mission. That's kind of the order. And right, exactly. And, and the core will... values, um, how did, you know, so I think this, um, when you're a, a, a startup founder, your core values of your company should be reflective of, but maybe not the same of your core values as a person. And I was interested in how you counsel startups and, and CEOs around that particular issue. Yeah, so I really think that your core values are a, a reflection of your personal values. Um, business values are a reflection of the composite corporation's personal values. And as a startup owner, um, thinking about what's important to you and how you wanna grow and manage your business, um, I think is very important. There, there is, for me, as a, I'm an entrepreneur myself, right? I'm a, a solopreneur, solo owner. And um, defining how I want to operate and the kinds of people that I want to work with is very personal for me. And it impacts the way, that I, the way that I service my clients. It impacts the way that I run my business. And so there is something very personal about it. Um, and you, you see this all the time with, with uh, business leaders as they grow their companies. They, you know, the, the organization takes on the character of those, of those values. And if they're living up to them and walking the talk, you see it in, in all of the way that they operate their business. You know, one of the questions I guess that would be a follow-up of that is when you're starting your business, right, as an entrepreneur, your core values, your vision, your mission, the story of the business is your story. You're, right. you're inextricably intertwined with that. Right. But then as you grow, um, the business and you hire people, the business kind of gets away from being just a hagiography or just a, a, a celebration of the uh, reification of the owner. It's no longer just like a manifestation of you as the founder. It becomes like an entity that almost has its own life and values and mission. And I'm interested, I bet you've worked with companies as they transition from, you know, CEO driven to team driven. And I'm just interested mm -hmm. if as a final thought you could reflect on that. Yeah, I think that um, one of the reasons that it's important to think about your core values in a broader sense is because your company may one, one day no, not just be you. Right. And that's why attaching those behaviors to the core values is such an important step to take, because when you define how you intend for that core value to be lived out, it impacts the way that you hire people and the stories that you tell later on as your company grows become the stories of those employees living out those core values as well. Um, one thing that I do want to make sure that I'm cautious about, though, is uh, even as you even as you look and hire employees who, who, who believe in and who honor your core values, you, th this doesn't mean that you are not still looking for a diverse set of, a diverse group of employees. So, you know, we all want to have, you know, a roof over our heads and eat great food, eat good food and, 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 and have clothing, right? Those basic human needs. Um, the way that we express all of those might be different, but we all have that. And so honesty has to be a core value, honesty as a core value um, for an owner and the way that he's hiring his employees should not, um, I hope I'm explaining this properly, but it should not impact, it should not, you have to think broadly and it should not negatively impact uh, your, your efforts to, to hire a broad, diverse set of, of, um, of employees for your company. Well, let, let me dig into that for a second and then we'll wrap up. But, you know, Lilia, who's on the chat, mentioned honesty and humility mm -hmm. as core values of BizHack. Let's just say for argument's sake that I, as the owner, disagree. You know, I think, I think it should be integrity and bottom line results. Um, and, you know, I say this just to, to give an example. I think honesty and um, uh, uh, is a great core value, but I'm just curious, like, given the example you said, Jennifer, how would you reconcile, you know, uh, the diversity and inclusiveness of different 
individual core values and then align them into a team. Yeah, that means that you've got to go through this process together, right? If you've got a team, you've got to go through this process together because you've got to be aligned. This is a perfect example of where, you know, the company is not just you. You've got other, um, uh, other instructors who work with you. Uh, you've got Lilia who works with you. And so this, the, those exercises that I talked about, when you've got a team of people that are working with you, you have to go through that process with that team. And Lilia, uh, I'd love for you to comment before we wrap up. So you don't want to be honest and, and humble, Dan? <laughs> I'm not humble. I'm, I, I'm fake humble. Can, that be, can false humility be a core value? No, that's not authentic. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think now, like I, I was talking about like uh, humbleness, humility, and authenticity, because like a lot of companies out there are saying the same. Uh, but why or how are we going to distinguish that they are actually being authentic and humble and honest to us when everybody can just say that and put that on labels or put that on their website. But then it comes to what you were saying, uh, Jennifer, like act, uh, act the walk. And mm -hmm. what are you doing? Uh, not only putting that on your website or putting that on your products, it's like, what are you doing to really living that honesty with your partners, with your own people, with other, um, with, with the market, for example, and, and how are you being humble and not just using that word as, oh, everybody wants honesty in their company. Right, right. Yeah, you guys have to, you, you definitely have to work through these, uh, work through these, this process together and, um, and ensure that you're aligned because that's that's actually you know I, I don't know if i necessarily want to call it a death knell but it's definitely a, a roadblock to uh the alignment that you need within organizations to effectively communicate about your business and if you're not aligned i guarantee you i always say internal equals external and whatever is happening inside of your organization, if, there's, if there is um, a disagreement or conflict in, in how you're viewing the organization, it always makes its way outside the organization. Yeah. But uh, to specifically address what you said uh, about authenticity, Lilia, the exam uh, and honesty, the example that Dan gave of how he's um, now supporting minority business owners in a very tangible way, is a great example of of that authenticity but it sounds like so it sounds like you guys um need to go through a core value session core values vision and mission session and define those for biz hack right i'll, yeah. I'll be call, i'll be calling you afterwards <laughs> <laughs> well that's a great segue uh, just a quick takeaway next steps we'll be sending you some follow-ups from today some of the great information that we've discussed and uh you know i did want to just do one last pitch for the scholarship uh, we're going to be closing the scholarship uh, applications tomorrow. So if you or anyone you know uh, is interested, uh, please go to try.bizhack.com uh, and slash scholarship and apply for it. Really encourage you to get this in front of anyone you think could benefit, who needs to pivot uh, because of digital and frankly, uh, who doesn't in this post COVID era. Um, and so with that, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Uh, we hope you join us for our five-week course starting Monday and for our continued Wednesday community sessions. Thanks, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thank and you. Bye. Thanks, everybody.